this episode, I want to cover testing in Rails. And specifically, I'm going to just go with the bare minimum defaults with what is included within the Rails application whenever you start up a new project. So first, let's talk about what is testing. Testing is a collection of classes that do not affect or alter your existing application, meaning that anything in your tests should not affect what's actually going on within the application, but it's something that should just be extracted in on its own within the Rails application. It can also bring awareness of broken parts to your application. And this is really important because if you are developing constantly with other developers, you could be creating some conflicts or broken features that maybe were not broken before. And testing is ensuring that you're getting your desired functionality. So why write tests? We refactor code more confidently, meaning that so whenever we go to refactor an existing class or module, we know that we can do this more confidently because we have good tests that will cover any kind of situations or edge cases that this refactor could affect. And we can add new code more confidently. And adding new code more confidently kind of plays on to the next part where it can help architect the business logic needed. And this is usually found in situations like TDD or test-driven development, where you write your list of tests first that covers all the different functionality that you know you'll need, and then you go write the code. So at first, you'll have a bunch of failing tests. So as you build and become more feature complete, then you would have all your passing tests and it can reduce client frustration. So there's been several times where I've updated a software product and every update I do, I'm always weary because I know that they always break stuff and it's really frustrating. So writing tests can help reduce client frustration in the long run because you're ensuring that the functionality that you're promising to your clients is going to work. And within Rails 5.1.0, there are several different types of tests that are included by default. So you have your model, your controller, helper, integration, and system. And so in this diagram, we can see kind of how the different tests are laid out. So the model specs, controller specs, and helper specs each test one specific part of the application. Where you have integration specs, and that's going to be more of a feature test, where you can test something like a sign up or sign in, and you can also test other things like adding to a shopping cart and checking out and so forth. And then you have system specs and system specs are a browser test. And those are going to do more of your happy path where you're testing the different functionality similar to the integration specs, but you're actually testing what the end user would see and it would actually launch a browser to run all of those tests. But the system specs are usually a little bit slower than the integrations or the other specs. So then we can take a deeper dive into each one of these and the model specs, you're gonna test something like the validations, associations, scope, or maybe even some of the business logic. Controller specs is going to test stuff like the status code. It's gonna test the content type. If the layout or template was rendered that it should have, you can also test flash messages. And you can also verify if inserts, updates, or deletes were performed and if it was redirected appropriately. So the controller specs aren't really testing the actual business logic. So it's taking in the initial request and then it's basically verifying what is going to happen. And then helper specs are specific to the view helpers. It's testing the different methods within the helpers and you're basically just testing the desired output. And then we have our integration tests, which is more of the feature testing where you can test your searching you can test adding to the card and so forth. And integration tests usually test the interface between different controllers. Then system tests I like to reserve just because they are slower for browser testing and the happy path. And the happy path is basically a set of features that must work in order for this application to be used. If any of these features do not work, then we have an issue within the application and it's going to generate support calls or other client frustrations. And there's many other type of tests that you can use. Some are with jobs, services, mailer preview tests, decorators, and there's many more scenarios. So in this episode, we're going to look at mini tests, which is the default testing engine that's shipped with Rails. But there are a couple of other different options. One is RSpec, 
and Cucumber, which Cucumber is more of a written in plain English type of test. And then it calls on different methods to actually execute. And then Capybara is actually built into Rails 5.1.0 under System Test, and that's more for your browser testing. And then you have Factory Girl, which instead of Fixtures, which Fixtures is basically just a controlled set of sample data that you can use that will populate in your test database when you are running your tests. And Factory Girl is just an alternative to using Fixtures. And there's many other ones, but these are the main ones that I want to cover in the next few episodes. So within your Rails application, you can look under the test folder and you'll notice that you'll have models, controllers, and helper folders. And this is where you would put each one of the respective specs. And then you also have a folder for your Miller previews, and then a folder for integration tests and also system tests. And then you also have a folder for your fixtures, which each one of your models would have a different fixture or something similar to that. Then you have your main test helper, which will be used to set up your testing. And then you have the application system test case, which is going to be the settings for your system tests. And I'll post a link in the show notes, but one of the guides I really recommend reading, which is the Rails Guide to Testing Rails Applications. And one of the things that's going to be really helpful is the available assertions. And this is basically a list of all the different kind of tests that you can run within each one of your scenarios. So they have something like a assert and then a test, and then make sure that this is a truthy statement. And likewise, on the flip side, assert not ensures that the test is false. So the basic kind of test, if we look at something like under the test models, and then our model name underscore test dot RB, it would look something like this, where it's requiring the test helper, and then it has a class article test, and this inherits from the active support test case. And then you have an example test where it's commented out, but it just says test, and then you have some string which would identify what this test is supposed to do. And then you have your logic where it asserts true. And this would be a passing test because the assert, if you remember, is checking for a truthy statement and true is one of those. So in our sample application, I created a user scaffold and this is what's created under our controller test. So as you can see, it already set up a lot of this for us. And you would definitely want to come in here and make the changes just to make sure it matches what your application needs. But you can see what it's doing, where first it's setting up a user and it's setting the users one. And so before each one of these tests, it'll look up the users one from the fixtures. And the fixtures by default, it created one and two. And then it sets the first name, last name, and email strings to my string. So the first test should get the index and it gets the user URL. So get is going to make a browser call to the user's URL and then it asserts the response is success and similar for the new action. But then we get into something where it's actually creating the user. So this is assert difference and the user dot count so this is checking to see that if there is a difference in the user count from before and after, and it's making a post to the user's URL, and it's passing in the parameters for that post. So if the user count is still the same number after it makes the post, then it knows that this test is going to fail. And this test is also checking the show page. It's loaded once you save the user. So in our controller, we would have to have a redirect to the user to take them to the show page. And then testing the show action, we get the user URL for the user. And again, this was set up at the top of the file. And then we assert the response success. So notice that we're not testing the content or any of the business logic on the page. We're testing when the user gets a URL, this is the responses that they should get. And then we have something like the update action where we then make an update to the user, and then we are checking to make sure that we are redirected to the user URL or the user show page. And then we have our destroy test, and this is asserting the difference that the user count, that the user count should be decreased by one when we call the delete verb, and then pass in the user URL passing in the user. Then again, we check that we are redirected to our index path. And then with our model test, so under the models folder, I have a user test.rb. We have two separate tests here. We have one test 
where the email validation should trigger, and this is where maybe we're validating that the email must be present. So when we call the user new, and then we have the first name, last name, but we don't pass in an email address and save, this save is going to be a truthy statement. So if it's saved successfully, then it'll return true. Otherwise, it's going to be false. So we can use assert not to check if that this should return false. And then we have our user should save, and then we have our assert, same thing, but this time we're passing in the email address and then dot save. So let's go ahead and run our test to see what we have. We can just call Rails test from the root of our Rails application, and then it's going to load up and then run all of our tests. And then you'll see that we have our first failure. However, if you get an E, that's going to be an error, meaning that there's an actual error in your test. And so it tells us that our user's test failed that the test email validation should trigger. So we expected the return to be nil or false, but instead we got true back. So looking at our test, this should have failed, but it passed successfully. So we need to go into our user model to see what happened. Loading up the user model, you can see that our validates email presence true is commented out. If we uncomment this and save it, we should now be able to run our tests and get a passing test. So I'll call Rails test again from the root of our Rails application. It'll run the test and now we have all passing. And then with system tests, these are a little bit different because it's inheriting from the application system test case. And this inheritance is where we're setting up the browser and the different kind of functionality for our system test case or browser testing. So the system tests, we're saying that we want to test visiting the index on our users, so we can visit the user's URL, and then we assert the selector, which is just another mini test assertions, and we're looking for the H1 tag or element, and we're expecting the text to be user. And then we can also test creating a user. So we visit the new user's URL, we fill in into the first name with first name, and this is just looking for the label with first name, and same for the fill in an email. And then we click the button, create user. We can then visit the user's URL. And then within the table, we check to make sure that in the TRTD elements, there is a first name text. And then the same for the last name and then the user one at example.com. With the system tests, because these are slower, they don't run by default with our normal system tests. Instead, you have to call Rails test system to run those. And then you'll see that it passed. So I'll run them again and then get the browser loaded on the screen. You can see that it quickly ran through each one of those specs. So I know this episode hasn't covered too much of the code side of things, but I really wanted to just demystify some of the confusion around tests, what they are and how they work, and then how you can use them. So it's something that I'm gonna cover in much more depth in the future episodes, but for this one, just wanted to get our fingers wet. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.